This is Christy Idaho Painter here on Paint Life TV. Today, I got a really cool video for you. I always say I got a really cool video, but this time I really do. How to roll walls and get professional results or roll walls like a pro. So I've gone back about 10, 11 years. I've got about 15 videos on how to roll walls. And so I'm, I put together some of the best tips and tricks to help you get great results. This is a long video. It's about hour long. So grab a soda, grab a beer, and just sit down and enjoy it. Um, some of the annotations and stuff like that in some of these older videos, they don't pertain, they don't work anymore. So don't worry about those things. Um, Cause some of the videos um, that you see it's kind of interesting it goes back 11 years ago when I was just shooting videos with a little Kodak place for so it's kind of fun you're gonna see that throughout the video some of that really old stuff and then you're gonna see stuff I just shot that's um, you know just kind of uh, just more up-to-date and the sounds better and the video is better the quality everything's better but hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed my videos, don't forget, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, that way you get notified every time I come out with a new video. If you don't hit the subscribe and the notification bell, which both of them, it just sends you an email every time I come out with a video. If you don't hit both of them, it doesn't do anything. It's simple, free, easy to do. Click, click, and you're done. Enough talking, let's get on with teaching and learning and watch how I roll walls to get professional results. Let's go. All right, Lucas is working on the cut-ins. He's cruising along really fast and I want to get my wall rolled before my cut-ins dry. So, and because I want to work myself into a wet edge right here, good practice to always keep a wet edge. It's the same as when you're rolling, you're going to be rolling into a wet edge. I'm going to start off from the end. We're going to be working on this wall from left to right. And I load up my roller. I'm gonna show you what I just load up my roller. I'm gonna place it right in the middle of the wall and then I begin unloading it from top to bottom as I go. Just like that. I'm gonna load it back up again. I usually do one pass and then load it up. So see I'm unloading it from top to bottom. And one, here's an, another thing I'll show you. I just flipped over my roller. Now I've got it direction. When you're actually rolling, if I'm rolling in this direction, I want to go the direction the roller is actually facing. As I'm creating pressure, it's pushing the roller onto the roller frame always. If I flip it over and roll this way, your roller can actually work itself off the frame if you don't have a good tight connection between the two if you're using a really cheap roller frame. These um, high quality roller frames, we use these Blue Tigers, it's never gonna work itself off, so I don't have to worry about the direction that I'm facing. It's not as critical, but some professional painters think it's pretty important that you always roll in the same direction. But to come over here, now I've got a lot of paint on the wall. I'm gonna begin my layout. So I'm just laying it out. I had it this way so I can get close to the wall. Otherwise, my frame would be hitting the wall so I can get close to the wall, lay it out. I like to lay it out from top to bottom. Come as close as I can to the ceiling, lay it out from top to bottom. Lay it out from top to bottom. It's pretty important, this color right here, probably would never see an issue with um, lap marks or um, streaks with this color and this paint. But if I was using like a vibrant red or something like that, that's where the, um, the laying out is very important. So unloading it from top to bottom. I'm listening for this down my roller. If I try to continue to go, you know, this direction and continue to unload it, it'll start to hiss more and more. It'll start to make a louder sound. And I know now I'm what, what we're doing is called dry napping. My roller is no longer putting out paint, but it'll actually start taking off paint. So I want to keep this thing loaded up all the time. And I, and I hold my extension pole. I get it in my hands to a point where when I'm fully reached, I'm about, you know, that far from the ceiling, 
That way I know I'm not gonna accidentally hit my ceiling. So I laid it out from there and I'm gonna do my layout, continue working right along. Not too much pressure, if you put a lot of pressure at the top right here and then come down, it's gonna leave a heavy spot at the top that's gonna run. Say if you come down here, a lot of pressure right there, it's gonna leave a heavy spot right there that's gonna to run too. So as I get to my ends, I'm gonna put a lot less pressure. One of the things most do-it-yourselfers do, they have a tendency to not load the roller up enough. Here's, if you notice, every just every nine inch pass, I'm basically loading up my roller, keeping it absolute sopping wet. There you have it, that wall is done. This is actually the undercoat for a metallic finish that we're gonna be doing, a Boero metallic grit with the Strie effect. It's gonna look really cool. You can check out that video at the end of this video. There'll be a link to it if you wanna see how we go about doing that. But I know you're gonna see a lot of, you know, out there doing it yourself um, home improvement sites and stuff show you this whole, um, V thing, which I'm, I kind of don't understand it a little bit myself, but hey, everybody's got their own, you know, um, techniques that work for them, rolling walls. This works uh, very well for us. And once again, this next wall, it's gonna be really critical that we do it and lay it out properly. So here we go, let's go to the next room. Lucas is doing the cut in, so always good practice, especially this now. If I was to do, if I was working by myself, if I did all these cut ins, went out, had a sandwich, took a break, something like that, and it was dry and came back and rolled my walls, um, there is a high, high likelihood that I'm gonna have what is called um, hat banding or haloing once again, and that's gonna be a difference in color um, to your eye, to the human's eye, of where the cut-ins were versus where the wall was rolled. And some of that, you know, it can be attributed to if you do your cut-ins and you just brush your cut-ins and then you roll your walls, where it's brushed, the paint is actually applied differently and it leaves brush strokes. And then you go back and you roll your wall, you're having stippling. And so you're gonna see that difference and it's gonna be a color difference to your eye and sometimes it's actually a texture difference. Same within the middle of this wall. If I roll this wall and I stop right in the middle of this wall, go off, take lunch, and it dries right here and then I continue, more than likely I'm gonna see a difference of a color difference where I started and where I stopped in a, um, in a color like this. And you know, if you get into really, really high-end paints, um, high-end paints are less likely to um, cause hat, hat banding or haloing, but there are some really expensive paints that just do it anyways. So Lucas is gonna get, he'll get his cut-ins done top and bottom, and then I'll start rolling. Um, we're using, this is blue tape, this is blue frog tape. So um, we're less likely to get any bleeding underneath or onto our baseboards using blue frog tape. Um, the frog tape actually has a polymer that swells when it gets um, wet or any liquid hits it. So nothing will bleed underneath it. Once again, I'm working out of a, a nine inch um, pan, the nine inch roller, because it's just one wall. I mean, there's multiple options, 18 inch rollers. Um, you know, inner fed rollers, stuff like that. But just to do one wall, I don't need anything, you know, big. And most of the time, you know, when we typically, if you'll see in our videos, we're um, doing our cut-ins, we're brushing it, and then we're going back and back, rolling it with a four inch roller. We're not doing that here because uh, Venetian plaster is gonna go right over the top of this. So uh, we don't have to be so critical, but we're very particular about not leaving a brush stroke on our cut in, because I can't get to the ceiling. I'm, if I get to get to the top, I can, I'll be about this short from the ceiling without touching the ceiling, and that's gonna be a brush stroke going that direction. That would look different than my, my um, roller being rolled up to the wall, and it's probably, you'll probably notice it. This paint right here, this is gonna be, because there's so much tint in this paint. Another trick, load up my roller, begin unloading it, I don't want to roll too fast. If I roll too fast, I'm going to cause splatter coming off of my roller. So here we go. Here's the paint right here for anybody that's curious. Claire. So it's not sold um, at any um, box stores or anything. It's only sold online. So 
we it was sent to me in the mail and so I didn't pay for it so it was sent to me to test out and see if I like it and I just did a bathroom today uh, in the color pink and I gotta say I didn't like that um, it, it splattered really bad and it, um, it didn't cover very well which is kind of interesting because now this one is actually covering really well and the pink did not cover well and splattered bad. The R tools um, we sell like this this is a premier extension pole if you're curious with a blue uh, blue tiger roller I think it's the best roller frame I've ever used um, really high quality they're all sold on our store and I'll show you as I'm getting to the end what I'm talking about so if you load up your roller put it in the middle and then extend it all the way down and all the way up it's gonna be heavy here and it's gonna be really light down there you could you know continue working it out but the technique I showed you you're gonna more likely have even paint across your wall less likelihood you're gonna have light spots and that's looking pretty dang good it's um definitely if this was not going to be um not going to be coated with venetian i can see some white speckles here definitely not a one coat paint um there really is no such thing as a one coat paint so those paints that say paint primer and one one coat it's all kind of a bunch of nonsense um just marketing ploys you know to try to um you know, market to the do-it-yourselfer, so don't believe it. Don't forget, if you want to uh, get notifications on these videos when we come out with them, subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you don't hit the notification bell, it doesn't do anything when you subscribe because you'll never get notified. Like when, we, when I'm done doing this um, metallic finish or Venetian plaster I end up doing on this wall, when I post it, you'll get notified and you won't miss it. So there you have it. So we're out here painting a whole office complex today. Got a lot of walls are going to be rolling, not just this small room right here. And we want to roll these walls fast. And the first tip is, is to use the proper equipment to paint fast. You can spray this whole office complex. There's a lot of rooms here we can spray it with a sprayer, but then there's going to be just a lot of overspray and dust we don't want to have to deal with. They're going to be replacing the carpet, carpet in here, so we don't really need to lay down drop cloths and stuff. And it would be easy to spray, but we like the finish of rolling our walls better, so we're rolling them. And one of the things to rolling walls fast is using a large roller. This is an 18 inch roller. If you want to roll these walls fast, you don't want to use a nine inch roller or even a 12 or 14. You want to use an 18 inch roller. We're using an 18 inch roller and a five gallon pan right here to hold a lot of paint. You got to roll these walls fast. So that is tip number one, using the proper equipment to paint fast. So tip number two to getting your walls to look like a professional did it and painting them fast is using the proper roller. If you use a cheap roller, it's going to release lint on your walls, it's going to be a big mess, and then a roller, a cheap roller, is going to cause a lot of splattering and it's not going to cover your walls as well as a really good quality one. A good quality roller, the proper um, height, which is the nap, is going to be your best bet to getting this thing done fast and like a professional painter did it. If you use a nap that's too short, it's not going to put enough paint on. If you use a nap that's too big, it's going to stipple it too much. So you definitely want to use the proper nap. The most common that we use, probably 95% of the time, is a 3 8 inch nap. I like a contractor white woven 3 8 inch nap or a purdy white woven 3 8 inch nap. Those work the best for us and leave the best finish. If you don't use high quality tools, you can never get a high quality finish. And using a really cheap, cheap nap, you're not going to get the paint on as thick and like it should be put on in a nice, good, even coating. It's just going to take more coats with a cheap nap. It may just cost you maybe $4 more, but it's well worth it because these things can be clean. If they're clean properly, they could be used for a lot of jobs. You can use these for just job after job after job, and they'll last a long time if you clean them properly. So tip number two is using the proper roller. So tip number three is using the proper product. If you use a cheap paint, it's not gonna cover very well, it's gonna splatter a lot, and it's just gonna uh, cause you a lot of issues. 
So you definitely want to spend the money on a good quality paint. These cheap paints are real watery, milky, and very translucent and just don't go on very well. So definitely spend a few extra dollars and you're really going to be impressed with the product and just the ease of how it goes on and how it covers. I can't ex express enough you know, how much you should buy a good quality paint if you're spending you know, four or five dollars more, even six dollars more, it's gonna eventually pay for itself in the end for the trouble it's gonna cause your you know, cheap paint splattering on the floor. But a good quality paint is gonna cover better and then it's even gonna go farther. So in the end, it might cost you more money up front, but you're not gonna use nearly as much paint as you would cheap paints. So tip number three is using a good quality product. So tip number five is applying your paint properly and laying out your walls. And we're gonna show you what it looks like to apply your paint properly and lay it out. When we're rolling our walls, we should be loading up our nap and roller a lot. You don't want to run out of your paint, what we call dry napping it. You're just gonna put a lot of paint on there and just do small sections at a time. And you're gonna run it and run it here from ceiling to wall when you eventually lay it out. You don't want to just start and stop in the middle of the walls. So I'm going to get my paint on there in a section and I'm going to either lay it out from top to bottom or bottom to top. I always like when I get my paint on there, I like to lay it out from the top and roll it all the way to bottom and lay it out. I'm going to show you what that looks like right now here in just a minute. But lay, applying your paint properly and laying it out is what it's going to make make it look like a professional painter did it in the end. It's going to give you really good results. If you got really light colors, the layout is not nearly as, as important as it is with really dark colors, deep bases, and ultra deep bases where the layout is extremely important. But it's good practice to always lay out your paints no matter what the color is. So here we go. We're going to show you what it looks like a professional painter rolling on the walls and laying out the paint. The first thing I'm going to do when I get ready to start rolling my walls, I want to just get this, this roller loaded up with paint really, really good. If you just start rolling right off the bat before it's loaded up, you're going to get just a lot of dry spots. So I'm just going to keep loading this thing up, rolling it on a small spot on the wall right here until this thing gets really saturated and loaded up. And then I'll begin. I'm going to start right here on this wall and I'll show you what it looks like to roll this thing. So I'm going to keep loading this thing up until I can feel that it's totally loaded up with paint. It's getting pretty close. Well, this thing absolutely saturated. It's starting to, you can hear by the sound when you're rolling it. If it's really dry, it kind of makes a louder sound, louder hissing sound. When it's really wet, you can just hear that that wet sound instead of a hissing sound. So that's starting to sound pretty good. Got this thing loaded up and now I'm going to start rolling the wall. For the purposes of this video, um, probably I won't start in the corner right here. I'll get, just start right here. What you typically want to do is work from corner to corner around here, but I'm going to start in the middle because the video camera you know, is set up you know, that way. So what I'm going to do, we'll just say like the corners you know, right here, I'm going to work this direction. What I like to do is put my roller right in the middle of the wall and then begin unloading it in that direction, just like that. So I'm going to load it up again because it already ran out of paint. And just get this thing saturated. Load it up again. You can see you want to just keep loading this thing up to get a lot of paint on here. So there's one section right there. Load it up again. Move over a little bit. And I'm not going to do my layout yet until I get a little bit wider of a section. Move over a little bit more. You got an outlet down here I can just work around without having to cut around it with a four inch nap. I can do it with my 18 inch roller. You always want to use an extension pole that you don't have to get on ladders and reach. You can use a, this is just a little two to four foot extension pole. So there I go. Got that section. And I'm going to come back over here and I like to go from top to bottom, lay it out from top to bottom and lay it out. I'm getting up here as close as I can to the ceiling, top to bottom and lay it out. What we typically like to do is do our cut-ins first. We'd have those done first, but just for video purposes, I wanted to show you how to lay out a wall right here in this room because this room, the lighting was best and everything in here first. But you would typically see the 
The ceilings cut in first, and then we would roll up and pass our ceiling cut ends. So just move over, do another section. Do you see any little holes or anything that you need to spackle? Just make sure you spackle those holes. Just like that. Got another section done. Load up my roller a little bit, and then I'm gonna lay this section out. So I'll just go right back over, overlap where I laid it out last time, top to bottom, just like that. All these, all these cool tools I'm using in my videos, in all my videos, these are the tools I really like a lot and I believe in and trust. You can always find the tools that I use down in the video description below. I always leave a link to them or you can just find them on my website, theidahopainter.com, where I sell all the tools and accessories that I use in my videos. So just keep working right along. Here, working down the wall. Another one of the keys to painting fast is always keep your bucket of paint you know, close nearby so you're not walking to it. That you just have to reach just a little bit to get to it. So I'm gonna lay out this section right here. And that layout, that proper layout, is going to make your walls look really good, nice and even. No lap marks, no heavy marks, or holidays anywhere. And here there's no baseboard, so I just go right down to the vinyl floor. I do believe they're actually they're going to be replacing these vinyl floors. But go back over, I'll work this way, this wall. Once again, you typically want to work from corner to corner. But I know somebody's going to say something about it, but the only reason I did it this way was because of video purposes. And what I like to do is I like to load my roller up, and I like to place my roller first thing right in the middle of the wall, and then begin unloading it from top to bottom. Once again, load that thing up. Start unloading it from the middle, one more time, loading it up, We're all the way to the corner. I'm gonna get that thing close to the corner. I did have a video where I showed you how to do ceilings. So I've got five tips to doing ceilings and doing the edges. And we have a roller that the roller itself, a nine inch roller, the nap goes over around the corner. And it's really cool for filling in these corners. And so we typically do our cut-ins first, do the corners with that roller so we don't have to brush our corners. It makes it a lot faster. You can see that, that nap on my ceiling video. Now we got this done, I'm gonna lay it out now. So back over here where I ended my layout, I'm gonna work my way this way, from top to bottom, top to bottom. There you go, that's five tips to painting walls, painting them fast, and making them look like a professional did it. So I just wanna take a quick minute to remind you, down in the video description below, you're typically gonna find all the tools and accessories we're using in the videos. You're gonna find more about them. You'll even find links that will take you right to our store at store.theidahopainter.com where you can purchase some of them after you're done watching this video. You'll also find our really cool shirts, hats, gifts, and accessories that you can purchase there too. So when you got a moment at the end of this video, 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 video go check out our store at store.theidahopainter.com. This is Chris, the Idaho Painter here on Paint Live TV. Today I got Jeremy John with me today, and today we're going to be introducing you to another one of those really cool game changing products. And John's got one in his hand. What the heck is it, John? This is the Corner Plus Roller. And these were sent to us, what, a couple, almost a year ago? Almost right? a year ago, the first revision of them, and mm -hmm. we really liked them, but we yeah. thought the quality of the nap itself wasn't good. A lot of the lints were coming out, and we asked them to revise it to make it you know from a four star item to a five star item and they've made a revision they have they made them microfiber which yeah. is really cool yeah this is the third generation so they went from 
you know, one generation to the purple generation to now this, and it's the microfiber, and this yeah. thing is the bomb now. Yeah, so it, it comes in a half inch nap, it's microfiber. This is actually like a top quality microfiber. I don't like, I don't feel like they went cheap Man. on this thing right They here. did not go cheap. That thing in the um, edge of it is trimmed really nice, perfectly, but the microfiber is high quality, nothing comes out of it. And yeah. so what the heck does it really do, John? It's so, not just a typical roller. Yeah, it's not just a typical nine inch roller, and you might think it's a little silly, but they rounded it over on the end, on a, yeah. on a full nine inch roller. I know there are some other companies that have something kind of like that, but this is made so that you can actually just roll your ceiling cut-ins, and that's where we use it a lot. Yeah. When we're rolling ceilings, we'll have one of the guys bust out a nine inch roller. They'll bring that ceiling color all the way down to the wall, or if we're doing the corners on walls, that it, it just works. Yeah, it, it works and it works amazing. We did post it on our social media just here recently mm -hmm. and said so people wanted to see it in action and wanted to see proof that it worked. And we're gonna show you proof right here because we do sell it on our tool store. We think that much of it, we sell it at our own paint life store and we only sell a limited products on there that we just think are real game changers that every painter or even do-it-yourselfer should have. And yeah. this is one of them. And it's uh, it's not easy to get a hold of. In fact, I don't know if there are a lot of other places you can get a hold of it besides yes. our tool store, but this is worth carrying in your, your vehicle. Our tool store is theidahopainter.com if you didn't know our paint life store. So check this out. We've already loaded up the roller and because we just got, these were brand new. We just got them ourselves, the third revision, and we had to test them ourselves to make sure they met our standards and quality. So here we go, just loading up the roller, and you can see on the end of the roller, it's roll lower, it's got paint all the way around. The microfiber is wrapped up. So you can see just right there, just rolling that, how it fills that in. And that, that corner right there has got a lot of texture to it. So, yeah. and it's got a lot of deep texture, and it covered it. So it's simple, you just use it just like a regular roller. This is one roller that will complete several different tasks right there, doing ceilings, doing your edge cut, edge cut ends. I would typically um, fill that in with a brush and then I would hit it with a four inch roller after that and now I don't have to do that. Yeah, and typically where we're especially using it is something like ceilings, like I said before. We'll have someone roll around if the ceilings are a different color than the walls because they can roll around. They don't have to climb up a ladder, cut it in. They can use an extension pole, a regular nine inch frame, pop this roller on, and it saves a ton of time and a ton of work. A ton of time and ton of work and that um, energy going up and down a ladder. Like in a house like this all day long, you'd be going up and down a ladder typically. You do, they do have, you know, such thing as a four inch, um, not this company, but like the four inch jumbo rollers. You'll have a, um, they're kind of folded over by one company, but this right here is a nine inch roller. It's a lot larger, it covers it's not a lot the more same. This one, you get almost that two full inches there yeah. of, of, of the color being brought over. And now that it's microfiber too, like, the, I think before the earlier revisions would have a little bit of a problem with some drips or splatter or things yeah. like that because there's just kind of a polyester blend whatever on the top of the the core this the, there's no drips it's holding on to it some people are going to get worried about having paint on the end of their roller there and while it's spinning it's going to be flicking it off but the microfiber actually holds all of that paint in it's like little fingers grabbing onto your paint so there you have it, the Corner Plus Roller. So we do sell them in our tool store at theidahopainter.com. How much do they sell for, John? They sell for a single roller for $8 or a three pack for $21. You gotta have these things in your paint truck or your paint van, or yeah. if you're a do-it-yourselfer, just have one kicking around in your house. Yeah, especially if, if you've got high ceilings, something like that, an extension pole and a corner roller is gonna save you from climbing up if you've got a big foyer to do or something like yeah. that. Yeah, need to adjust your neck or need a pillow? Give it a try. Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give us a thumbs up, man. Just hit that thumbs up, bang that little notification bell. That way you get notified next time we come out with a new video. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> this is Chris, the Idaho Painter. We're showing you how to paint high ceilings with a 16 foot extension pole. Using an 18 inch nap to cover large areas so we don't have to paint overhead. 
like this too much. We're rolling the ceilings. It looks a lot better versus spraying them. Using an 18 inch nap and a pan that holds five gallons of paint. This is a pretty 16 foot extension pole. All the cut-ins are being done with a Titan 440i airless sprayer with a 310 tip. This is Chris. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about what it is to keep a wet edge in painting and rolling walls. And keeping a wet edge, you're going to be painting in uh, whatever room you're going to be painting in. You're going to be working from right to left or left to right, whatever is convenient for you. And in this room here, I'm working from left to right. And keeping a wet edge is working from whatever you're going, left to right, right to left, and you're keeping your paint wet and you're not allowing it to dry or not, you're not putting the paint on too thin that it won't flow together. So in this wall, I'm gonna be overlapping 50% and working along this wall and rolling on my paint and I am keep dipping my paint in the nap. If I run it out to the point it begins to get dry, the paint, there's not enough paint for it to gel and flow together. So I'm going to be constantly dipping my nap and loading my nap up and working from left to right. And a loaded nap will just work just a, a small section and then I got to load it up again. Keeping that paint wet, not running my nap out of paint want to keep it saturated and continuing to work putting lots of paint on the wall this isn't the final coat this is just our first coat it's going to take two coats to cover this wall so our wet edge is not as critical but if you don't keep a wet edge and put enough paint on the walls to get it to flow together it'll leave stripe and lap marks on the wall. So you want to just keep loading your nap, keeping the wall and nap saturated with paint. The paint should never begin to run out of paint. The nap shouldn't. And if the nap runs out of paint, it'll actually start pulling it back off the wall. So keep loading it. You can see how many times I'm loading this nap running down this wall, keeping the nap saturated and keeping my paint edge wet. And that's what keeping a wet edge is. If you don't keep a wet edge and keep your edge, your trailing edge completely saturated, the paint won't flow together, won't gel out, and you'll actually get lap marks or stripe marks up and down your walls. So it's important to keep a wet edge. This is Chris Yadaho Painter here on Paint Live TV. Today we're going to be painting a bedroom, two of us. So two professional painters, Lucas and I. And we're going to show you how two professional painters would paint a room like this quickly and efficiently. You can do this in a day. We've got ceilings one color, walls another color with an accent wall. And then we're even going to be doing a metallic finish from Boero Coatings on this back accent wall. So Lucas and I, uh, Lucas has been painting for quite a few years. I've got quite a few years experience painting. Two professionals painting a room quickly and efficiently, so stay tuned for this video. So here we go, we're gonna get ready uh, to paint this room. First thing, we walked into this room. Uh, fortunately, there is no furniture in here, so um, we don't have to go cover anything with plastic. We just came in here before we start bringing our tools in and stuff. We um, brought drop cloths in, just set drop cloths down. It's a really good idea to just have drop cloths on everything if you can afford it. So drop cloths cover the entire carpet. We've got ceilings one color. The very first thing you want to do is get your ceiling color on and particularly the cut-ins. We will be rolling uh, the ceilings with a corner plus roller because this roller has um, the roller microfibers that go all around the end of the roller. So it makes doing the cut-ins on there fast and efficient. So ceiling color first, wall color next. 
got drop cloths down. Um, tools are in here now. We're going to be running some nine inch paper and tape around the baseboards to protect from any splatter or stippling that might get on them. So here we go. We're going to get going with this process painting. Lucas is on ceilings. I'm going to be on the masking and getting ready to do the walls. So here we go. So I'm going to start running one inch tape, frog tape around these baseboards. I like using frog tape because I don't want any paint bleeding underneath my tape. So I'm going to use frog tape along the top of the baseboards and then we're going to run nine inch paper that's just going to be tacked to the baseboards right there i like to just take a brush you can dust a brush or any brush and dust the tops of the baseboards off that way you don't have anything causing issues with the tape sticking so i'm going to begin dusting and taping right along here okay lucas is just cruising right along rolling the ceilings I finished up the masking and now I'm going to be skin coating our walls and I know a lot of people are going to be you know, questioning why 9 inch rollers. Um, I do have an 18 inch roller. I typically would even use an 18 inch roller on a single bedroom like this. It takes more paint to load up, more time to load up. Um, you lose a lot more paint when you clean up, it takes longer to clean up. But um, just for the sake of showing you in this room, an 18 inch roller in action, I'm gonna use an 18 inch roller. I'm gonna be using a semi-smooth uh, three eighths inch Woven Pro from Premier. I really, I think Premier makes some of the best rollers out there. Um, the three eighths inch for our orange peel is the best option um, for probably 90% of what we do. Um, the Richards um, 18 inch roller, these quick release things that just spread apart, very simple, easy to use. Extension pole, shouldn't have to get up on a ladder. You know, it all doing ceilings as part of painting fast and efficiently is using extension poles. Uh, Lucas has got like a two to four foot extension pole. I've got a four to eight foot extension pole. We have multiple extension pole options. But I'm gonna start rolling these walls. Got an 18 inch pan down here I'm going to be using. One of the drawbacks to an 18 inch is when I get to my corners, I can't get all the way into a corner, so I gotta do my corner cut-ins with a um, brush and four inch roller. Uh, but our accent color is coming up. We're finishing on this corner right here. Accent, corner, um, accent color is on the inside of that bay window. So I'm gonna roll right here first, so that will start drying. So here we go, accent color. Going to be using today um, Miller Paints, Miller Premium. So never used it. We're gonna see how that goes. Right now, Lucas is rolling ceilings. The light, the way the light is coming in this room, we decided to uh, roll the ceilings with the light. Lucas is rolling them all this direction, laying them out. Okay, now I'm gonna begin putting my paint in my uh, 18 inch roller pan. So you know, one of the keys here, you know, a good paint's gonna have tint, tint consistency across gallons but it always is good practice to box your paint. So I'm gonna be putting my paint um, from both gallons into this 18. So we have 10 consistency. So this is called boxing your paints. I'm gonna leave a little bit in the gallon, the gallons to box together for the cut ends. Okay, now I'm starting to roll my walls and here's you know, one of my overlap points, very, very important to get your overlap points done first. These are part of the steps that, you know, make painting fast and efficiently is knowing, you know, where an overlap point is, where I'm gonna have to mask. And I mean, this is actually a 90 degree corner, so I won't have to mask here, but if it's like a rounded corner or something where I'd have to mask on it, it'd be very, very important to get that done right away. I'm just cruising right along, you're rolling this wall. Once again, this is a skim coat, so I'm not trying to cover this in one coat. I'm just doing it, skimming it, and I'm coming down, staying away from my frog tape at the bottom. You know, about, you can see it's somewhere around like an inch or so, inch and a half. And I don't have to be very particular about laying my wall out with this color. This is a very forgiving color on my first coat. But see right here, once I do my layout, you all going to want to be going laying out from top to bottom on my second coat, laying it out just like this. But this is, um, this paint 
This is the evolution, and I gotta say, so far, it's actually covering amazing. So, it does have um, the consistency like at cashmere, they said, because um, I told them I use cashmere, so far it's working out pretty good. We'll see how fast it dries, because very important to get in and out of this room in a day if you're gonna make any money, so you gotta be able to do two coats in a day. Hasn't taken us very much time. Lucas got done with the ceiling, rolled the first coat, got up there, touched it. Second, it's already ready for the second coat, so he's already putting second coat on the ceiling, and I haven't even got done with the first coat on the walls, but the walls are drying really fast too, so as soon as I get done with these walls, um, I'm gonna do the accent color while he's doing the sec second coat on the ceiling. So cruising right along pretty fast here. And the ceiling, so since we're doing two coats, our ceiling cut-ins will be done right before we do the second coat on the wall. So ceiling cut-ins will happen, one of us will cut in the ceilings, the next person will um, roll the walls right behind. That way, and you wanna do roll your walls while your ceiling cut-ins are wet. Um, otherwise, you'll have haloing with dark colors. So we do have this accent color in here. This is uh, one shade darker than the walls. And uh, we're just gonna do one coat because it's only one coat because we're gonna be troweling over a Boero metallic suede coating over that so we don't have to do two coats. We've got some cracks in the windows, cracks from um, the window to the drywall so Lucas is caulking with frog tape so he can fill that and pull the masking you know, all at one time and those cracks will be filled. So we got a lot of our colors done for today. We're gonna be setting some of this stuff aside for tomorrow, we'll be working tomorrow. Uh, here's how we store our rollers and brushes using brush baggies and brush beanies. Just take them off, stick them inside brush baggie and literally this will store inside these baggies i've had them in these baggies for over a month until we can get some place to clean it if you're into cleaning them if you throw them away throw them away um, we always clean them just to save resources actually a lot of resources go into the rollers i'll clean these for the end of the day and here's a brush so we've got one of our brushes inside a brush baggie because we may have some touch-ups tomorrow to do with so we won't we'll just leave the brush in the brush baggie a lot of these tools and accessories you can find them in our videos um, in the video description down below or all the rollers and stuff brush baggies you can find them on paintlifepro.com paintlifepro.com is where a lot of the tools and accessories we use while we're painting so there you have it, our bedroom is all complete. We're back the second day. The bedroom was pretty much completed the first day. Uh, ceiling's one color, walls another color, accent another color. We had to come back today to do our Bolero metallic finish. You can find that on another video. At the end of this video, you'll see the link to our metallic finish using a random roll random brush using a turf tool so it uh, looks absolutely amazing we did ended up doing trim trim touch-ups too so two hours today on the ceiling we ended up using glidden on the final coat glidden ceiling paint gpl 000 and it was flat because we ran into a snafu we were painting the ceilings uh, in the beginning with an exterior paint and every now and then you run into um, things like that where you don't check the labels and that's what happens but even with that we put two coats up realized um, it had a shine to it and we realized it was not the proper paint because we do our ceilings in a flat paint it uh, looks really good the ceilings look excellent now uh, we ended up doing three coats on the ceilings we ended up just having to one coat the ceilings after you know we did the first two coats on there. So with all that, the bedroom still only took one day, um, seven hours first day, two hours the next day, and that included the bow arrow coating. This thing is a must-have tool. It's the Titan Interfed Roller. You gotta check it out. If you don't buy it, test one out, because I believe if you test it out, it will make you so much money. With that, I want to give you three tips when it comes to using the Interfeed roller, and one of them is delinting your rollers. The rollers themselves will typically have some lints or fuzz coming out of them, and if you're painting on smooth wall, level five finish, or even Sun Valley textured walls, you could get some of those lints on your walls, and you don't want to have to deal with that. A very fast, simple process to do is delint it. You can delint it with a roller tape, 
All you gotta do is wrap inch and a half tape around your roller, just like this. It's very simple, fast, easy to do. And the adhesive on the tape is gonna pull off any loose lint or fuzz. So now all I gotta do is just pull off the tape here. It's gonna fluff up my roller and also de-lint it. You can take it outside into a bucket and you can use a bucket of water to actually clean and fluff it up too and pre-wet it and that will de-lint it also. So just gonna remove my tape off here. You can look on, there's a few little fuzzes, quite a few fuzzes on those. Those would have been on my wall. Now this thing is de-linted, ready to go. Another tip is the airless sprayer pressure. I found a sweet spot running my sprayers right around 400 PSI. I use a Titan 440, that's a small pump. You don't need anything large. These are very convenient to move around, nice, small. But 400 PSI is all you need. If you get too much pressure coming out, you're gonna get too much paint coming out of here and you could have paint spilling off your roller or nap, so don't run too much pressure. I like 400 PSI. Another thing is, is Titan and now has come up with this extension at a 90 degree angle right here where I can just run my regular airless gun. I used to always run an inline gun, which is very natural to roll, and the angle of my hand is very natural. Now you can see it's kind of almost exactly the same as an inline gun. But the big benefit to this, once I've got the same claim, I just remove my extension and now I got my gun still attached to my sprayer and I can go spray ceilings, walls, or trim and I don't have to have a dedicated sprayer. So there's three tips when using the interfed roller. Inside the pan we use um, these throwaway tray liners that so we don't get paint on our pan and that's another good um, item to have so you don't have to clean out your pans at the end of the day. And um, to start off, we've actually rolled one coat on this wall already, and I'm going to be rolling a second coat. But prior to doing the second coat, we do our ceiling cut in, bottom cut ins, and then we roll the wall. So I'm going to come along here and do my cut ins real fast. And then I'm going to roll the wall after I do the cut ins. That way, we won't see the this line on the cut ins because the nap going this way actually stipples the paint going this way. So, I just did the ceiling cut-ins a few minutes ago. Now I'm going to be doing baseboard cut-ins and wall cut-ins. So we're down here working on this room. We're actually painting all these walls in this room with this 18-inch roller, and we're painting them really fast. And one of the things, before you get started painting, you always want to set drop cloths down. We've got drop cloths down here. We've got a 9-inch taper with 1-inch tape run around all the baseboards and now we're ready to roll. Just gotta get this thing, the floor is protected because you don't want to spill anything on the floors. Got our 18 inch pan right here, or bucket, and this is actually a five gallon bucket right here that'll hold five gallons of paint. We typically fill it up about, you know, a little less than half full, start rolling out of it. This is our extension pole that I'm actually using, and the ceilings are about eight feet high, so you just want an extension pole that's not too long, that'll reach up there comfortably at eight feet, so you don't have to do a lot of bending or reaching. And got our uh, 3 8 inch roller right on here, and um, or it's an 18 inch roller with a 3 8 inch nap on it. And now we're just gonna begin the rolling process, and I'm gonna show you how we go about rolling these walls fast. You just start up just by loading up your roller. And if you haven't got it all loaded up, you just want to get it all loaded up with paint and then begin the rolling process. And now I'll show you how I actually roll these walls. So to roll a wall with an 18 inch roller, it's a little bit different than using a nine inch roller. And this also is a wall, you can see this blue, it's gonna take at least two coats of paint. And if you're gonna be two coating a wall, it's gonna be a little bit different process on your first coat than it is on the second coat. The first coat's basically gonna be a skim coat that you want to be thin, but it's gonna dry really fast. And I think I can, if I get it on properly, I'll be able to cover it on the second coat with this color that we're using. This is a pretty light white color, but two coats will do it. So my first coat's gonna be a skim coat that I want to dry really fast. If you put it on too heavy, then you're gonna have to wait too long before you can do your second coat. And I'm typically, when I'm, rolling, when I'm rolling a wall with an 18 inch roller, I get my roller loaded up and then I'm gonna set it in the middle of the wall and then I'm gonna roll up 
and then down, and that's gonna be my first stroke right there. So the process is gonna be up, down, and then right back up again, and down. And then I'll look at it right there, and it's laid out nice and thin, even, there's no heavy spots. Now I'll load up my roller once again. You can see how much you can actually cover with an 18 inch roller with just a couple swipes of the roller. So I'm gonna load it up, get a good loaded up with paint again, and then put it set right in the middle, up, down, up, down. And I'll look at it if there's you know, maybe a heavy spot right there, I'll just lay that heavy spot out. You can see how much surface area I've covered now already with just loading up the nap twice. So I'm gonna load up my roller once again. Once again on the, the first coat, laying it out, I'm not really concerned about doing a proper layout. What I'm concerned about is just getting a thin skim coat on these walls that will actually dry really fast. On my second coat, that's when I'm actually gonna be concerned about laying it out from either you know, bottom to top or top to bottom when I put the paint onto the wall. Like when we do one more second, I'm gonna lay it right in the middle, up. So you can either you know, start going, put it right in the middle wall, you can either go down or you can go up. It really doesn't really matter. Put it in the wall, go down, up, and then just like that. One more time on this side. So you load up the roller. You're gonna put it right in the middle wall. It's gonna go up, down, up. And I can see right there, I got just a nice thin skim coat on there and that will actually dry. We actually do paint walls fast and do high production painting. You want a lot of heat and not a whole lot of humidity. So we always crank the temperature up if we're in a residential home home, crank it up to 75, 80 degrees, open up the windows slightly so it'll blow air out and get rid of humidity out of the room. And this will actually, this skim coat will probably dry within 15 to 30 minutes if you've got the temperature up high enough and the humidity is low enough. Another just quick, simple tip too, when you're loading up your roller, you know, when I load it up, instead of just carrying it straight to where you're gonna go, actually do your rolling, it's a good idea to just twist it. It's a little bit harder with an 18 inch roller, but if you just turn it to the side, it'll you know, keep it from dripping. So I typically load up my roller and then I'll turn it to the side and then take it to where I'm going. Once again, just gonna load it up. You turn it and now I'll move it to where I'm going. So it's been a half hour, now we're starting this wall, approximately a half hour. I'm gonna roll a second coat on this wall, the paint's all dry. Uh, prior to rolling the wall, we're doing the ceiling cut-ins, and then we cut in the bottom, uh, did the caulking and tape, and now we roll a final coat on here. I'm gonna show you what it looks like to actually roll out and lay that final coat. So doing the final layout on this thing, the process is a little bit different. I'm not doing just a skim coat, but I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna load up my roller. So just load it up in my pan, and then I'm gonna put it in the middle of the wall, and you can either go up or down, whatever's more comfortable for you. Sometimes, I think uh, I like going down a little bit better, but it doesn't really matter. Just set it in the middle of the wall, and typically you're gonna start from either corner of the wall and you work your way to the opposite side, but for video purposes, I'm just in the middle of the wall right here, but I'm just gonna put it down. I'm just gonna roll it down, up, and then back down again. And then I'm gonna load up my roller again. Just load it up with a lot of paint on your final coat. You want this to be pretty heavy. I'm gonna overlap it about quarter. Go down, up, and then down again. And now I'm just gonna lay this out. I always lay it out from top to bottom, top to bottom, just like that. And that's how you actually lay it out. And doing these light colors, the layout is not nearly as critical as doing a layout on dark colors. That's what's really important. On here, you don't really have to be that critical with it, but come back over here, it can work the opposite direction now, just for camera purposes. Overlap it about 25% down, 
up, down again. I'm going to load it back up. Make sure you load it up with a lot of paint. You can turn your roller to keep it from dripping. And you go down, up, and then down again. And now I'll just lay it out. Just like that. Move to this side. Down. There you have it, and that's how you properly lay out the wall. Then we'll go back. There's gonna be some light spots on the cut-ins because these walls have to be two coated. We typically do the cut-in. We try to do the cut-in heavy once, and then just go back and touch it up. That's typically how we do our cut-ins. Same with the cut-ins on the masking where we cough. Sometimes if it's a multi-coat wall, we'll just roll the bottom with our four inch nap and get close to our tape. And then on our second coat, coat, then we'll caulk it, do the cut in, roll the wall, pull the tape. So there you have it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. It's a long one. It was about an hour long. Hopefully you grabbed some tips to getting you down that road, to getting your walls looking amazing. If you've enjoyed our videos, give me a thumbs up. Hit, get that little thumbs up thing. Don't worry about hitting the thumbs down. Just hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you got any tips or tricks that you didn't get in this whole um, hour long video, leave them down in the, the comment section below. Um, questions and comments. If you have some tips and tricks that you can share with us that I didn't share in this whole hour long compilation, just leave them down in the comment section below. We would love to hear them. We'll see you on our next video.